Hi, today I'm going to be talking to you about fibroids, how they affect your fertility, how they can be treated. So if you've been diagnosed with a uterine fibroid, if you're still looking to fall pregnant, and particularly if you've been offered uterine artery embolization, then you need to listen to this video. We know that fibroids are the most common abnormality that we see in the wall of the uterus. They affect at least 50 to 60 percent of patients. Many of the times they are diagnosed as an incidental finding at a routine gynae examination. In a small group of patients they are symptomatic and in this group they may present with heavy bleeding, painful menstrual cycles and uh, sometimes pressure on the pelvic organs which affects their function. Traditionally these have generally fall into surgical management, be that myomectomy or hysterectomy, and we'll have a look at that now. So in the management of symptomatic fibroids, what are your options? Well, one, medicines can be used to manage those symptoms, but often their use is limited to three to six months, and that's because of the side effect profile of these uh, medical treatments. And so really that's not a long-term solution. It's really a temporizing measure. When we look at surgical options, for the women that have completed their families, then something like a hysterectomy can offer symptomatic relief. For those that are still looking for future fertility, traditionally myomectomy has been performed. That's where the myomas are removed from the wall of the uterus, either through open surgery or through laparoscopic surgery. And lastly, we've got a new treatment modality called uterine artery embolization. This is a non-medical, non-surgical treatment. So what is this uterine artery embolization all about? Well, basically, access is obtained to the uterine arteries, and this is through a catheter which is fed through the femoral artery, so in other words, from the groin, into the femoral artery, into the uterine artery, and the uterine artery flow is then blocked and this prevents blood flow to the myomas. It shrinks their volume. It reduces the heavy the menstrual cycles. It reduces the pain as experienced with those menstrual cycles. And um, overall, you get symptomatic relief, which is equivalent to that of the hysterectomy group. Well, that all sounds fantastic. But if we look at how uterine artery embolization compares to hysterectomy in terms of complications and in terms of uh, long-term outcomes, then there seems to be a shortfall. So we know that in terms of major complications, there's a higher major complication rate in the, the UAE group, in other words, the uterine artery embolization group, compared to the hysterectomy group. Not only that, there's a significantly higher minor complication rate. And if we look at the re-intervention rate, in other words, the patients who still have symptoms after initial treatment, who then require subsequent additional uterine artery embolization or a myomectomy or a hysterectomy, well, there's a 10 times higher figure for that in the uterine artery embolization group. So just some true and falses here. Uterine artery embolization is not safer than hysterectomy. It has more major and minor complications. It doesn't give a long-term result that's equivalent to surgery. And the reason for that is at least 32 to 35 percent of patients, in other words, one in three, require some further form of treatment after they've undergone uterine artery embolization in order to manage their symptoms. It's as a result of this high re-intervention rate that it is not more cost effective in the end. And lastly, the pelvic floor is not in a better shape after uterine artery embolization than it would be after hysterectomy. So we've talked about treating symptomatic fibroids, but we haven't talked about fertility. So what about if you've got an asymptomatic fibroid and you're looking to fall pregnant? Can it be left? Should it be left? The answer is no. If we look at all myomas, the chances of you falling pregnant with a myoma in your uterus is about 30% less. But more importantly, when you are pregnant, your chance of having a miscarriage is significantly higher. Now, uterine artery embolization has been put forward to patients as a fertility sparing treatment. And we need to look at that critically. 
And what's the first thing that we're worried about in patients that we see that have had uterine artery embolization? And the first thing is, what is the function of their ovaries? We know that because the uterine artery links up with the ovarian artery, there's a chance that those little spheres which are injected into the uterine artery can potentially block the blood flow to the ovary. So what's been seen is at least 7% of patients end up having permanent amenorrhea. In other words, they permanently lack their menstrual cycles after this treatment. Now we know this seems to affect older women more than younger women and there tends to be a recovery in the younger group. But when we look at the measures of ovarian function, even in the women who subsequently regain their menstrual cycles, the ovarian function is never the same as it was before uterine artery embolization. Now, if we look at the uterus after uterine artery embolization, the figures will show that you can expect a reduction in the size of the fibroid by 50%, which sounds fantastic. The problem with that is physics. Because of the relationship of the volume to the diameter, if you had a 10 centimeter myoma or a fibroid, and then you underwent uterine artery embolization and its volume decreased by half, you would then be left with an eight centimeter fibroid in the wall of your uterus. So while there is a 50% reduction in the, the volume, it's not a 50% reduction in the diameter. So you're still left with a uterus which is non-functional. In other words, it cannot carry a pregnancy with an eight centimeter myoma in the wall. So it does not magically disappear all the fibroids. They simply reduce in their volume and very often the uterus is left in a non-functional state. The next area of concern is the endometrium. And there is a significant number of women who end up with endometrial abnormalities persisting after uterine artery embolization. And this affects implantation and because of that, pregnancy rates. So if we compare uterine artery embolization and the traditional fertility sparing myomectomy, how do they weigh up? And the answer really is there's no comparison. M women undergoing a myomectomy for removal of fibroids have a one and a half times higher chance of being pregnant than if they undergo uterine artery embolization for the same fibroids. Not only that, when they are pregnant, the women that have undergone uterine artery embolization have a three times higher chance of having a miscarriage compared to those that have undergone myomectomy. What this all means is that to put a baby in your arms, a myomectomy will definitely make that a bigger chance of being a reality than having a uterine artery embolization. So a lot of the time, patients are led to believe that uterine surgery will leave their uterus in a state that will not allow for successful pregnancy, that somehow the integrity will be affected to the point where either the uterus will rupture during pregnancy and certainly that vaginal delivery will not be an option for them. So let's look at that. If we look at the rates of uterine rupture after a myomectomy, whether it be laparoscopic or whether it be an open myomectomy, we know that the overall rates of rupture are fairly low and compare favorably to the rates of rupture that would be seen after something like a cesarean section. If we look at women attempting vaginal delivery after having had a myomectomy, if it was an open myomectomy, the rates of success are as high as 88%. And if it was a laparoscopic myomectomy, we're into the 90s, 93%. So really, myomectomy should not be seen as a procedure which leaves you with a uterus which is non-functional. In fact, the opposite is true. So what's the take-home message? I think, most importantly, you need to have a discussion with a fertility unit regarding your fertility choices. You need to have an informed decision. And... The only way of really appreciating the impact of something like uterine artery embolization on your fertility future is to have an open discussion with a fertility expert. Only after that, 
are you in a position to make an informed decision regarding a treatment which may leave you with reduced ovarian function, affected endometrial function, and possibly a lower chance of achieving your dreams. So go on, make the call, make the appointment, and make an informed decision. Thanks.